Well, any of you that have raised children, and even those that haven't, know that life is pretty messy. It's paradoxical, ambiguous, contradictory when we're looking with our human eyes. But that essence and energy that Dave brought up, that essence, is essence and energy of the heart, the love, that is the truth of life, that's when we get our spiritual eyes and we can see the miracle, the miracles that are unfolding every single day. I mean, if we think about our mothers giving birth to a child that is us, what a miracle that anything could be so sacred, divine, and confusing. How do we do that? But a miracle. And if we think that in each of us, in every one of us, since there's only one Father, Mother, God that creates everything, that we have a piece of that sacred miracle inside of us. Life is a miracle. And if we take a minute just right now and feel the earth that we live on, this sacred mother earth, and just go outside and see things blooming and the cycle of life and the animals and the little parts of all of it, everything is a miracle. And that's what Albert Einstein said. There's only two ways to look at life, as if nothing is a miracle, or as if what we know to be true, everything is a miracle. And I want us to develop that in ourselves this morning, to really look at life in all of its miraculous iterations, manifestations, that this is a miracle and we're living here together now. I love that idea. I love that thought. Life is messy, but we remember the sacred. So if we think love is the mother and we are all the children, as siblings, we've got to learn to get along. <laughs> Dang it, we've got to do better. So these seeds of peace I was talking about, that's really important. And recognizing this amazing energy of life that we live in, that anything and everything is possible. This morning I was leafing through my book, Love Poems by God, and I found a little quote by Kabir. And Kabir is a 14th, 15th century, century priest, poet, mystic. He was a little naughty. <laughs> he had an attitude. But he said, fish swimming in water and feeling they're thirsty need to seek serious professional counseling. <laughs> Hello, here we are. You and I have to learn to embrace a bigger picture. It's hard here, it gets tough, it gets, it gets funky and funny and dirty and messy and beautiful and joyous and delicious, but we've gotta to learn to embrace it all. Um, love, well, I read this other quote I thought was quite cute too, so I'll share that. It says, children have a much better chance of growing up if their parents have done so first. <laughs> but since we are all works in progress, there is no guarantee. For sure, for sure. Um, love is the basic reality of all life. That's what we've established. Love is what we come from. It's innate within us. It's one of the virtues that Reverend Janet talked about. There's actually 52 virtues, one for every uh, day of the year, but it's what, what's inside of us. Fear is learned. Fear, we, now we, there are some innate instincts, reactions that keep us safe, but that fear, the fear of the unknown, fear of things we don't understand, the prejudices we get, that things are wrong, how are we gonna, that's all learned, and what we learn, we can, uh, louder please. <laughs> Uh-huh, we can, we can learn differently. We can learn better. That's why we're here, we're on this process of growth and becoming. And it's a beautiful way to be okay with our mistakes, to be okay with everything, to know that we're on this process of becoming something more every single moment. We have ch choices we can, we can make. Um, 
Marianne Williamson talks about the meaning of life in her book, Return to Love. And she says, love is the essential reality and purpose on earth. To be consciously aware of it, to experience love in ourselves and others is the meaning of life. Meaning does not lie in things. It lies inside of us. Joseph Campbell said very much the same thing. He said, life is without meaning except the meaning we give it. So we can ask, what meaning are we giving to our lives right now? What are we making important? What are we cultivating inside of us to grow bigger? And what are we learning to subdue and relax a little bit? We have a choice every single moment. Rumi says, and let me just explain something. You wonder probably why I talk so much about Rumi. I love Rumi because his life's work is about helping others get to the core of their being, which is their heart and which is love. That's the core of his work. He wants us all to get there. And he said, our task is not to keep searching and seeking for love, but to look inside and find up all the barriers we've built against it. That's our job, to find out where we have built up those walls against love. Wow. We do it for protection, but we've got to rise up. We've got to rise up and understand something so much bigger, who we are. And there's another, uh, another quote that I love, and this is from another mystic, because I quote mystics a lot, and I learn, and I study, and I read mystics a lot, because they have a direct connection to spirit, to God, to the infinite. They know, they've studied, they've had that breakthrough, where there just isn't the divide between our spiritual essence and our human essence. They have it connected, plugged in tight, and there is no severing it. And so Hafez says, God revealed a sublime truth when to the world he sang, I am made whole by your life. Each soul, each soul completes me. Each soul, everyone, we're all part of God knowing itself, spirit understanding itself. We don't get punished for making mistakes. We're in the learning process and growing closer to the wholeness of all of it. We need to rise up to understand who we really are. We need to make love a decision every day. And I know Jesus said, last commandment, he said he was a, sitting at the last supper before what he knew was his pending death. And he said to his disciples and anyone else at the table, he said, one last commandment, love one another. Well, he could do it. Can we? That's a big ask. And I've really thought about that because all the spiritual leaders say we have to love one another and never is there a time that's more important that we can learn about that. Leah Buscaglia, the love doctor, said love one another doesn't mean making everybody like you. It doesn't mean everybody thinks alike. They do the same thing. It means it's filled of diverse ideas, diverse minds, many ways of thinking, and we learn to embrace it all. Embrace it all. We need to do that. But love one another. Here's what I came up with, and it hit me in the middle of the night. I said, that's a big ask. It is a big ask. How can we love everybody when we just can't stand their behavior? <laughs> oh and we don't like the way they're thinking, how can we do it? I found a saying that I want you to keep in your little pocket because it's a good one. When that comes up, please say, I love the possibility of you. <laughs> Isn't that a good one? It came to me in the night and I was so excited. Just think of somebody who's a little, ruffles your feather a little bit, Any, anyone, and just say right out loud, I love the possibility of you. And do you know how many times I've said it to myself this week alone? You know, when I'm a little less than the most wonderful, sweet, thoughtful, kind, wonderful person that I know I can be, I said, I love the possibility of me. Let me step into that. That would be a great place to be, to be in my possibility, which is always there because we can always become and grow something even more and greater. Yay. Um, Meister Eckhart, 
who's probably one of the greatest known mystics of all time. In fact, the Catholic Church was thinking of expelling him because he was so threatening with his loving and kind and joy joyful ideas, but he passed before they could do that. So um, he said, what keeps us alive? And I say keeps us alive in this crazy world that can be so incomprehensible sometimes. What keeps us alive and allows us to endure? I think it's the hope of loving and being loved. He said, we weep when the light does not touch our heart. It's sad, it hurts, we're lonely. We wither like fields if someone close does not rain their kindness upon us. We have to learn to love by loving. We have to do the work. A little, all day long, a little burrow labors with a heavy load on her back or simply carrying the worries that only little burrows know about. And we know that worry can be more exhausting than any heavy load. And she does this day in and day out. But often, a little monk, I wonder if it's a little monk or a kind monk. It's a little burrow and a kind monk. A kind monk stops by and gives her a pear. But more important than that, he looks in her eyes and he rubs her ears. And for a moment, she lets go. She even seems to laugh because that's what love does to us. It frees us when we let go and feel that energy and presence. So that's what we're called to do. And on this Mother's Day, which is a day of love, it's about, you know, <laughs> hi, Naya. <laughs> um, Hi, Cammy. <laughs> That's what love does. But anyway, um, love doesn't sit in us like a stone, just inactive. It's like, it's like flour waiting to be made and to be molded and to be worked on and to be kneaded and to be grown and to expand in ourselves. We got to work it, kids. We got to work it. So today, being Mother's Day. You know, Mother's Day, and I'm so glad you said it, Dave, is about all women and the feminine energy on the planet. And it's not just about the mothers that gave us birth, but those that were, were mentors to us and saw the best in us and could nurture us and let us grow. And so, di so today, I would like all mothers to come and just stand up here while we give you a little blessing. Come on up. Would you just join me in a prayer and just plant your feet firmly on the ground and just open yourself as a vehicle and a vessel as you feel yourself, feel that light of spirit as it comes into you, as you know you are an inlet of God's infinite, potent, creative activity of love. As you allow that love to fill every cell of your being, knowing that you are love and you are loved in this moment, and being this vessel and vehicle to be an inlet of love. Know that in the same vein you are that outlet of God's grace, of God's compassion, of God's goodness and God's love. That as you raise up in your consciousness to accept everything that you truly are that is good and right and true and beautiful, you become the light that ignites this world in health, in joy, in healing, and in love, it is being done right here and right now. As we let our love and go and release it, the wings of angels are taking it right now and surrounding this world in the light of goodness and compassion and truth. And we seal that by saying, and so it is, right here, right now, and always.